Hi ladies. Welcome back to m and &M, Lesson 4. This is our fourth week together. I can't believe it. Um, now I bet you can tell that I'm in Japan. See this background? This is in the one room of our house that is a traditional Japanese style. The rest is pretty modern. But this shoji behind me is the Japanese paper that is used instead of curtains. Uh, there's a glass sliding door behind it. It's a beautiful room. Sometime I would like to show you. There's a tatami mat, a woven grass kind of mat, and just some beautiful things. So, next time, maybe another time, I'll give you a tour. But welcome back. I am glad you're here. I'm really eager to know how is it going. What has your week been like this past week? Um, have you been fixing your eyes on Jesus? I'm sure you have failed at times because we all do. But I hope it has been a special week of chewing on God's Word. Um, I was reviewing some old verses just a little while ago, earlier today. And it was amazing to me. I want to encourage you because I was looking at some verses, looking at my cards from some verses that were from a year ago or so. And I remember at the time it was hard. I went through it. I memorized them more or less. Um, but it was a busy time for me and I had a hard time settling and really quieting myself. And today as I read those verses it was it was amazing they were in there not that I could quote them perfectly but they were a part of me because I had spent that time so I encourage you to spend the time do the discipline repeat those words say them again and again chew on them pray about them and then keep moving on and you will be surprised that they're still in there and they are your verses. So, um, have you been able to work out a place for MMing? I know it often happens just during the day, wherever, but it would be great if you could more or less decide on a time and a place and a method. Do you put your verses various places? I loved the Facebook. Um, page on for the m and m Facebook page where a couple of you uh, gave pictures showed pictures of your verses in the car or Leslie's um, verse up on the wall on her blackboard in her house um, so please uh, let's share if you get some good ideas if you have some um, really special times where God ministers to you through His Word or ministers to someone else through you using His Word, please share it either on the Facebook page or email us at mnmladies at gmail.com. But let's share. We are, we are struggling because we're not face-to-face. -face. We're in cyberspace or whatever this is. I do not understand it, but I'm using it. Um, so let's connect as much as we can. Share your stories, please. They don't have to be great and grandiose, but share with each other, and that will encourage us. Now, what have we said about faith so far? Our series is, By Faith, Things Are Not As They Seem. So, what have we said? Here's a quick summary. I'm not going into it, but this is some of what we've talked about the last few weeks. Faith is a gift. Remember, this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. It comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. It's the Christian's way of living. It is our way of living every day. It is the way we walk. It is the way we live. It's temporary. We walk by faith until we walk by sight. It is temporary, but it's vital. It is vital. The Latin word comes from, means life. It is our work. When someone asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? He replied, believe in the one he has sent. Faith is not a feeling. 
I have a hard time with that one. Faith is not a feeling. It's temporary. It's vital. It is a gift. And also, we learned last week, it is not to be looked at. We do not look at our faith. We do not look to our faith. We look to Jesus. Our faith is just the grasp on Him. That's all. It can be weak. It can be strong. It can be shaky. But it is the hand reaching out to Him. And it needs rehearsing. I love the quote we use. Faith requires a continual rehearsing of and delighting in the many privileges that are now ours in Christ. So, that's a quick summary. Now, what do we do at the beginning of every class? That was just an introduction. Ladies, let's M&M. And we start by shutting the door. I wonder if this will work. Oh, it did. There's a Japanese door shut. I hope you have a door to shut, or at least in your mind. Shut the door. Are you ready? Let's pray. Lord, I have shut the door. Speak now the word, which in the din and throng could not be heard. Hushed now my inner heart. Whisper thy will, while we have come apart, while all is still. Lord, I have shut the door. Here do I bow. Speak, for my soul attent turns to thee now. Rebuke thou what is vain, counsel my soul, thy holy will reveal, my will control. In this blessed quietness clamoring cease, here in thy presence dwells infinite peace. Yonder the strife and cry, yonder the sin, Lord, I have shut the door, thou art within. Lord, I have shut the door, strengthen my heart, yonder awaits the task I share apart. Only through grace bestowed may I be true. Here, while alone with thee, my strength renew. Amen. And that verse, Isaiah 55, 2 and 3, that I quoted the other day, the Lord says, and we just told the Lord we are shutting the door, we are here, we want to hear from Him, we want to quiet, we're going to do the work of trying to quiet our hearts so that we may tune in to him that we may spend time with him and here's what the Lord says listen listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare give ear and come to me hear me that your soul may live all right it's time for our song now I had a treat this week a video of our m m class in Lexington, South Carolina. They videoed the class for me so I could see what they're doing and feel like I was a part of it. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this video was of the ladies singing our song, All Must Be Well. I wish we could all gather together, every one of us, and sing this song a cappella. So, but so this time we're going to put the audio of those ladies singing behind the lyrics so that you can sing with your sisters in South Carolina. Are you ready? Let's sing. Sing through days of sorrow, all is well. 
now let's ask the Lord to be our teacher. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your powerful and active and sharp and living word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives in us. Lord, please take your word during this brief time that we have together. Take your word and plant it deep in our hearts that it may take root and grow and that we may grow and be changed and look more like you. Lord, I know that my heart and probably my sister's hearts, they need plowing up. They need breaking up. The soil gets so hard so quickly and so easily. So we invite you now, Lord, break up our, our hearts, the soil of our hearts, and make them soft and tender that you may plant your seeds of your word in them and that the soil would be fertile and good and ready for your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it's recitation time. And you know that also means recite or read your verses. Remember, you are welcome to read your cards. What's the adverb I use? Boldly. You may read your cards boldly or recite them boldly. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. All right, are you ready? Our first verse, are you ready? Our first verse was our benediction. And um, it is from where? Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I always mess up on that last part. Can we try it again? Sorry, you're going to have to. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. I think I still messed up, but let's move on. All right, our number one verse is Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Let's do it again. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And our verse that you've been working on this past week is a longer one. It is one of my favorites. We actually did this verse in our, in, here in Japan in my ladies' English Bible study class. We worked on Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. You ready? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Beautiful. Now, the next verse, our new verse, is Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Are you ready? So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. Now this verse really lends itself to hand motions. I highly recommend hand motions. Anything you can do to help your brain get the word in you. 
Uh, sometimes if you depend on those hand motions too much, it gets a little embarrassing if you're in public, but uh, maybe you can just imagine them saying them. So I thought um, of something like this. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, you received him empty-handed, you came with nothing. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. One more time. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. Isn't that good? I love that. All right, we have said all our verses, and now it is time for the meditation time. So let's quiet our hearts and receive what God has for us today. Now, I think every one of us, every Christian knows that we become a Christian it's by grace, through faith, right? Ephesians. But we come empty-handed. Now, I want you to try to remember. Some of you listening might not be believers yet, but this might be a good time to just hear what it's like for us who are believers. Sometime, if you are a believer... Sometime in your life, you came to an awareness, whether you grew up in a Christian home or not, whether it was a gradual thing or a pow kind of testimony, but at one, at some time or another, you came to the realization that you were separated from God, that there was a God, one true living God, and something was wrong. Something was very wrong. You were separated you had sin. You were a sinner. And in one way or the other, you heard the gospel, the good news that Christ died for you in your place to take your punishment for your sin. He died in your place and your part was to come to Him. Come to Him and receive his free gift of what he has done. So we come empty-handed to receive. That is how we become a Christian. We do not work our way to God. We do not earn our way to God. It is a free gift. He gives faith. He gives understanding and to some degree, and we receive that free gift. Now, what we don't realize or what we often, often forget is that just as we received Christ Jesus as Lord, so we are to continue every day of our Christian life. We start by faith, we continue by faith, and we will end by faith. So it is faith from first to last. So that's a tremendous point that I keep forgetting and the Lord helps me remember and I, I keep forgetting because my flesh is so bent on doing it, on depending on myself and not needing God, even as a believer. So hear the good news. Just as you received him. Do you remember? Do you remember what it was like? That time you received him? You just came as you were. And you received him as your savior. That's how we live the rest of our moments in this life on earth. So be encouraged. It is still, still by faith. Now. Another part that I would like to pick out of this verse, I'm not going through the whole thing, 
But another part is rooted. I have to tell you a story of, I had a good friend named Barbara York. Maybe she's listening. She was a missionary in Kenya. She was Aust she's Australian. And she lived in Columbia, South Carolina, with her husband for a short time to go to the Bible school there. And we became friends. And I was getting ready to go to the mission field for the first time. So one night is after we had gone out for a meeting or something, and we came back together, I took her to her house in my car, and we stopped, we turned off the car, and we sat and talked. And I asked her, Barbara, what advice can you give me? You have been on the mission field for several years. I'm getting ready to go. What would you like to tell me? And her answer was two words. Are you ready? Dwell deep. Dwell deep. You know how have you read about on the bottom of the ocean, even though if there is a storm and high waves going on up top, deep down, those plants that are down, down there at the bottom, they hardly move. That idea of dwell deep is very dear to me. Um, <clears throat> trees that have roots that go down deep, when the storms come, those trees bend and bow, not snap off. They bend and they bow. What a great picture of the Christian walk. Roots deep in Christ that we may stand strong in Him no matter what the trials, no matter what the storms. I love that. There's a little chorus. Maybe you've heard it. I love it. I often sing it to myself in the car. <clears throat> Set my heart deep in you, O Lord. Set my heart deep in you. This world allows no peace, no rest. I find my rest in you. Isn't that pretty? I didn't do it very well, but the words are fantastic. I love that. So, about roots. The question is, are you really getting into God's Word on a regular basis, on your own, and then going out and acting on what you read? It says we are not to be merely listeners of the Word and so deceive ourselves, but to do what it says. So I think that every time we read, we hear God's Word, we take it in, or we're m and on our verse cards, we hear what He has to say, we receive it, and we say, God, what did you, what are you saying to me, and what would you have me do? As we do that, as we apply God's Word, I think every time we do that, we take it and we apply it. We chew it. We taste it. We take it in. We meditate on it. I think our roots go down a little bit deeper. And our faith muscles are strengthened. Like any muscles, if they are exercised, they get strengthened. So it is with our faith muscles. Believe. Trust. Meditate on. Ponder chew and act upon his word and the roots go down deeper now let's say the verse again so so now just as you have received Christ Jesus sorry so just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord continue to live in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Now the as you were taught, built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, just a little reminder, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
That is where our faith comes from. That is how it grows. So we must be in the Word. No matter how we feel about it at any given moment, get in the Word. Read it. Read it. Eat it. It is our nutrition. And as we take it in, faith comes as the Spirit of God works in our hearts through His Word. Okay, now, this last part that I want to talk about is the last part, overflowing with thanksgiving. Now, I said last week that I'm reading the book um, 1,000 Gifts by Ann Voskamp. I'm still eating that up. It's Some of you may not like it. It's you got to read it slowly. She's very artistic. Um, but when I read it slowly, and probably two or three times per chapter, I love it. I think she has a great deal to say, and that the Lord is really using her. And it is all about giving thanks. But today I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. Um, a previous M&M verse that we had was Colossians... What was the reference? 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace... Now listen for the thanks part, or the gratitude. Listen in this one passage. Let the peace of Christ dwell in you... Sorry. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach one, teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. In that one passage, giving thanks and being Having gratitude in your heart is mentioned three times. Um, we know for sure from Thessalonians that it is God's will that we give thanks in everything. Um, and I'd like to refer to two people whose quotes have blessed me. The first one is C.S. Lewis. Listen to this, the part about praise which I think is a form of thanksgiving. They're a little bit different, but praising, thanking God. C.S. Lewis says, I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses, but completes the enjoyment. It is its appointed consummation. Now, to get this down to our lives. The way I think of it is, um, I remember one time watching, or my son was watching uh, something on TV which was really, really funny. It was very good and it was funny and he was loving it. Well, he was downstairs and I hear him laughing and, and then I hear, Mom! Mom, come down here. You have got to see this. Come on, come down here. Come and watch. This is great. Come on down. So I went down and watched with him, and we enjoyed it together. Think about when you have seen a really good movie that touches your heart, that edifies you, that you know is really good, or you read a book like that. Have you ever been reading a book and you just think, I have to put this down and I have to go tell someone how good this is. I have to tell them. Which says something about if we are shy and timid about sharing the gospel. I think it is because we are not enjoying the gospel personally. But apart from that, when we enjoy something, we want to tell. We want to express we want to praise. And it is not just the expression, as C.S. Lewis says, but somehow it completes that enjoyment. It's like if you're just enjoying it by yourself and you have no way to express it, to praise it to someone else, it's not quite complete. 
That's the idea. So, this idea of completing the circle. Overflowing. See, it started out just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord. Continue to live in Him. Rooted and built up in Him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And overflowing with thanksgiving. The beginning was coming empty-handed, receiving Him. Then it ends up with you are filled to overflowing. And you give thanks. Thanks. So, this idea, it has intrigued me. Another person that I love to read and listen to is Andre Sue, S-E-U. She is a writer for World Magazine. You can get her podcast for free. You can listen to her. You can read her um, books and articles. But Andre Sue said some things that I just love. Now, listen to this, okay? She says, yes, remember, the idea, the context here is completing the circle of our experience with God by praising Him, by thanking Him. Okay? He, she says, my experience is that there's an enhancement to Sunday worship service that is more than psychological by a certain amount of talking through it in one's pew. You don't have to be boorish. This can be at a barely audible level. Unless you find yourself in a black church in Philadelphia, then the sky's the limit, she says. <laughs> when in Christ alone is sung, and I hear, in Christ alone my hope is found, then if I whisper privately to Jesus that He is my only hope, or something along those lines. You are my only hope. You whisper it. You think it. It can be done quickly. But something along those lines. She says, I feel that I have made a connection with him and have closed a spiritual circle. For example, during the sermon, I hear a truth, an exhortation, or a promise that especially smites my heart, and I instantly pray over it. Something profound, when she does this, she says, something profound seems to happen in the heavenlies. I like that. A materialist would never buy this. As if a circuit has been completed. She says, electric current goes out from its source at a remote power station, making its way to a utility tower, over wires to your house, to the lamp on your table, to the light bulb, to the filament of tungsten. But if there's no contact made in the bulb for whatever reason, the juice has traveled all that way in vain. At the last step, it was stillborn. This resonates with me, ladies. This idea of overflowing with thanksgiving. Respond with praise and thanksgiving. Often. Always. And this, another picture, another idea she says. Again, during Sunday morning worship. She said, picture a worship service as a, as a lover's rendezvous with God. He initiates the love talk, otherwise known as the preacher preaches. So the preacher is preaching from the Word. It is God speaking through His Word to His beloved. Now, what do we do on Sunday morning? You know, most of us. We sit there like statues, listening. She says, nary a sound is heard in the room, either of assent or dissent. The preacher ends, and we move on to the last scheduled part of the program. How would a lover feel if his beloved were as stone-faced to his overtures as we are to God's 
in the Sunday Sermon. Wouldn't she rather reciprocate with continually uttered exchanges of affection? Wouldn't she confess her love in his pauses? Wouldn't he be waiting for her to ratify their love with her declared acceptance of his promises and with her own pledges? Is not the Sunday sermon only completed in some real sense by our quiet refrains of Amen and thank you and have mercy, God. I challenge you this week as you m and m Ask God, ask His Spirit to bring to your mind often to give Him thanks, to praise Him. It's what Ann Voskamp's book is all about, the whole thing. Learning to, as it says in Scripture, to give thanks in everything. For this is the will of God concerning you who are in Christ Jesus. I have found as I have tried to do this more and more, have a mindset of thanksgiving, eyes to look for His blessings, His gifts, and thank Him for them. As I have done this, something opens up. Something in my relationship with God clears up and the channel is wide open. So I encourage you to, as you fix your eyes on Jesus, as you feed on His Word, and as you look around and as you walk through each day, make it your goal this week on a daily basis to be full of thanksgiving, to thank Him, to praise Him, to tell others, praise Him, to others, but let us overflow, overflow with thanksgiving. Ask Him to do this work in you, to help you. Our next verse, next week, it's a little bit longer, but I have a feeling, and it's brand new, I have a feeling that this one is going to become a favorite of m &Mers, of many m &Mers. It is Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. Let me read it. I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I'm excited about how God is going to use this verse, these verses, in your hearts, in your walk, and in mine. So trust Him. Take Him at His word and dive deep into this, into these wonderful promises, into, these one, into this wonderful prayer. Pray it daily. It's a great way to meditate, particularly on these verses. It is a prayer. And so the topic of next week is, by faith we pray. So, happy m and May God use His Word deeply and greatly in your hearts. And may He bless you richly with His Word. Thank you.